Hi there, Linda Artisani, Artisani Bookkeeping. So I have the camera off this week because I, um, we had our house painted inside and my office was included and it looks like the bomb went off in my house. Everything's all over the place. And basically didn't have a lot of time to, we had to put everything back, didn't have a lot of time to put a blog post together. So this is kind of late. Um, and I basically just rolled out of bed. So this is the answer for why the camera's off. <laughs> and I had worked yesterday and I turned my computer on and saw that I had to take another test. So I just wanted to show you I'm going to pass the test. I better pass this one. <laughs> I work in this program all the time. It was a little annoying. It had a ton of screens I had to go through. It wasn't quick. They changed it once again. Oh, and I also passed my CPEs. Woo okay, so getting back to QuickBooks Online. So one of the pet peeves I have is I think sometimes when they make this, the engineers make this um, program or do changes, sometimes the the error messages aren't really clear. And this actually came out of me working with a customer this week and we were going through his file and I'll show you just a couple of steps that I do. So this is a QuickBooks Online accountant's co company file. You can tell that by this little, this little um, briefcase that's for the accountants and all my tools are in here so I logged into my own account and then logged into this customer's account in this law firm. So a couple of the steps that I do is I'll come into the tool and I'll go to report tools. One of the first places I go when I'm looking at a customer file we were working on last year which you know the August deadline's coming up for the first wave of uh, extensions and you can see in here that you know I'll look through here I'm like okay he did you know they're reconciled on the Chase credit card through March but they haven't done their 2018 stuff so that'll be a couple of things I would address with this client but for purposes of this this recording I wanted to show you we'll just pretend everything's re re reconciled for 2017 so we're going to come into the reclass tool which is one of my all-time favorite tools it was introduced years ago in um in desktop and I was so excited because it saves so much time you know you don't have to go through every transaction and we would just go through some of these accounts and see that, you know, there's some legal services. So it's not showing because it's invoicing. So if I change this to say all, it'll show the transactions that would show on an invoice. And I can't reclass these. So when you see that little red dot, you can't reclass it. I'd actually have to go in and open the invoice to change it. So we come through here, sales of product income. This is going to tie back to video, uh, last week's video, because you can see here the sales of product income when we cleaned up the chart of accounts I don't want to see dash one that means there's more than one and the system had to is with it had to make this dash one to keep it with a different name so I'd have to go in and clean that up service income um, these things I would like to see under sales but they're not subcategories under sales so this would all tie back to that video and I'll put a link in the post coming up to unapplied cash payment income I wanted to address this because I touched upon it in the chart of accounts and I wanted to show you in the chart of accounts video, I wanted to show you why this account occurs and how you can get rid of it. So in here, you can see that he's got a payment. The invoice would normally show if the invoice was dated after the date of the payment. This is where you would see this. this since there's no invoice, this tells me that this payment, if I click on it, there's no invoice. And he would have received a warning on that saying that you're entering a payment without an invoice do you want us to create a credit? And that's what happened in this case. So I'd have to have an invoice entered to clear this out because clearly this person paid him. Maybe they paid him a deposit and, and that's a whole nother um, issue you'd want to do and, and create an item for a deposit, put it in your deposit, in your deposit, customer deposit account, which would be a liability account. You now owe this customer the work and then you would clear that out later when you've actually earned the income. So you can see here, you don't, you didn't select any invoices. Maybe you should have created a sales receipt. So this is a pretty clear warning that you're going to save it as a credit. But you'd want to address that at year end because I don't want to see this hanging in this unapplied cash payment income. And you'd only see this if you put this on the cash basis view. And this customer uses cash basis uh, reporting in his, for his books. So let's come down to the other one, and here's Joe Smith. So we went into Joe Smith's invoice. He's like, oh, wow, what's Joe Smith's invoice in there? 710 and receive the payment. Oh, no, no, that should have been. I, I didn't put the right date. So we'll come into the invoice, and we'll change the date, which is what we did. I'll just change this to a 3. And then we came in here, and he goes, oh, no, no, I don't want it to be widgets. I got rid of that. That was in, made an error. This should just be services. So I'll just type in services here and then hit save. And I'm changing a invoice 
something's not quite right. And this is where I wanted to get into the warning label that's a little unclear. One of the list elements assigned to this transaction has been deleted. Oh yeah, I noticed um, Fred Smith is deleted and Joe Smith is deleted. And Fred Smith's a, a sub-customer of Joe. And you, before you can modify this transaction, you must restore Joe Smith, Fred Smith. Okay, I get that. That's pretty, pretty clear, right? So I'm just going to go back here and revert my invoice back to what it was and get out of that box. So now I need to go over to the sales. And I can see they're not here because I deleted them. So I come over to this gray gear, which is kind of hard to see, and say include the inactive. Back over here, I'm going to go to Fred Smith because it was Fred Smith's invoice. I'm just going to make him active. So now he's active. I'm going to come back over to, I'll come back over here, come back over to this. And now I can come over here and change this invoice to say services. This is what happened actually with my customer. I, I tend to fly through things. So save transaction you linked is linked to others. Yes, I know that. Oh, I need to change the date to make it 310. Safe. What the heck? There's that warning again. Now I know I made Fred Smith active, right? You saw that I made Fred Smith active and it's giving me that same warning. So why is that happening? So it became like a vicious circle, right? Um, I know I fixed it. I was in here. I made him active. I hit make, act, make active and it says is now active, right? It says it. Joe Smith, Fred Smith, now active. So why is it not? I can hit make active all day long. The problem is, is Joe Smith is inactive as well, and he's the parent. You can't reactivate a sub-customer with the parent customer not active. So let's go back here. And this has probably happened to other people and they couldn't figure it out. So I'm gonna go back to that little gray gear. I'm gonna include inactive, and I'm gonna start with Joe. So even though Joe wasn't the customer on that invoice, I'm gonna make Joe active first. Now I'm gonna go back to my sales list again. Joe is now active. I can see it, there's no deleted after his name and I'm gonna make the list back. And now I'm gonna make Fred active. And I'm gonna make him active. Now I'll go back to my other tab that I have open and I'm just gonna recycle it so that I can refresh the screen. Come back to my unapplied cash payment income. Come back to my invoice. Change the date of the invoice to 310 because that's when he should have put it and not 710. And also he wanted to change widgets. So let me see if this will let me just save this. And it did. So he wanted to change widgets because the widgets was supposed to be services. Let's change this now to services. And when I changed it, as you see, it changed it to a zero amount because services didn't have an uh, amount added to it um, as a default. So now I have to make it back to the actual invoice amount so that now makes it paid. You can see paid now in this corner. Hit save, go back, go back to my unapplied cash payment income and all I have left is Joe Ingalls. So I just have to make an invoice for Joe Ingalls for 332 to clean that one up. That's there. It was fairly easy to clean up as long as you understood where the deleted was. And it, it was pretty clear in the message that it was coming from deleted Fred and, and deleted John, but I wanted you to see that you had to reinstate the parent customer before you did the sub. I hope this was helpful in this video. Um, I will be making some more videos like this, but I just wanted to put this together because it happened this week and just show you that sometimes you have to really stop and think through the processes. And, and that's really basically how you clean up that unapplied cash payment income account. Thank you for watching. I hope it was helpful and um, we'll be seeing you soon on more videos. Thanks. Bye.